I would uh, certainly categorize this as pretty big news out of the, the, both the uh, AFC South. Um, nope, not even close. AFC North and AFC East. Why I said South? Not sure. Miami is the southernmost tip of uh, Florida, and maybe the United States. Maybe maybe like San Diego, like Tijuana is a uh, is even further south and like you got the keys but whatever um that's pretty irrelevant to this actual video because we have a gigantic trade the geographical locations do not matter so much as far as they go to the divisions however minka fitzpatrick is headed to the pittsburgh steelers for a first round pick in 2020 now this actually has quite a few ramifications i want to make sure i have the exact details of the trade perfect here uh this happened just moments ago about about uh 30 moments ago if you count a moment as a minute and um this is a huge move it really is now i don't know that it's a huge move so much for the steelers as it is for the dolphins uh they're just kind of hitting the reset button and it kind of sucks for Dolphins fans, obviously. The team is horrific right now. But did you lose your first-round pick from a year ago? Yeah, and then you have Christian Wilkins still on the team. You have Jerome Baker. You do have some pieces to work around. None really on the offensive side of the ball so much. I mean, you look at Preston Williams, but is Albert Wilson really a young piece? No, he's 27 or so. Devontae Parker has kind of been a wishy-washy player. Not such a great first-round pick for them. But on the defense side of the ball, I think Jerome Baker can be the leader of, of the team, first of all, and the leader of that linebacking core. I think Christian Wilkins is certainly the best player on that defensive front already uh, as far as the front four goes. Charles Harris is proving to be a bust. The Dolphins just historically and currently have not drafted well at all. If you go down the list for their first-round picks in the previous decade and even you know further beyond that, the Dolphins are not making themselves a competitive team year in and year out. It's amazing that they have managed um, to win as many games as they have in some of these seasons. And I know they're not winning the AFC East ever. At least they haven't really. But um, just, I mean, some of the recent first-rounders in memory who are who have been bad or are no longer on the team, Minka is now gone. Charles Harris is a first-rounder that has been terrible uh, out of Mizzou. You look at um, at Ryan Tannehill a number of years back. Now, he was like a hybrid quarterback slash receiver at Texas A&M. I mean, yeah, I know he played quarterback at A&M with a little bit of receiver uh, early on. But, I mean, that's who you spend your first round pick on to be your franchise quarterback. And they sat in limbo forever there. And they didn't really progress as a franchise at all. And now, I think, finally, with a new coaching staff, as far as head coach goes and Brian Flores, how long he lasts, I have no idea. He's in a really, really tough spot. I think ownership has been terrible. Steven Ross has proven to be an incompetent owner over the uh, past several years, and, and the team just has not been in a position to compete or to win. And I really just think that this move is hitting that reset button and saying, hey, Christian Wilkins, as far as first-round pick goes, moving forward. I don't think anyone else on the team is safe in any regard, uh, except for maybe this current draft class. You know, I don't remember all of the picks that they made. I, Isaiah Prince out of Ohio State, I think, is still on the team. And that was like a six-round pick. But the middle is kind of foggy for me. I'd have to pull up the draft class. But this is just so weird for uh, for the Steelers, in my opinion, because is Minka a fantastic player with unreal versatility? Of course. Of course he is. Minka can play free safety. I think you can move him to play strong side if you wanted to. I think his best fit is probably free safety. I know he has all the makings of, an, of a dynamic nickel cornerback. I don't really think you trade a first-round pick for a nickel corner, especially when you already have Mike, Til uh, Mike Hilton. Now, you have Sean Davis at free safety. And I think Sean Davis is a decent player. Could he move over to the strong side? Absolutely. I believe he's done that in the past. However, you look at their current kind of strong safety, and, and they spent a first-round pick on a Terrell Edmonds last year. And Terrell Edmonds has not been a good player so far in the NFL. And are the Steelers ready to admit that as a terrible first-round pick? Probably not. Probably not. But I think they just might run, like, a, a big secondary now and have, have Minka out there or, like, a, like, big dime or something like that. You know, like, a dime packages, more nickel packages. And even though their secondary is poor... I think if you have Mike Hilton, that's got to be your nickel guy. I think he's actually a really underrated nickel cornerback in the NFL. Minka Fitzpatrick, 
a huge part of the reason he wanted off the Dolphins is they didn't really have a defined role. They wanted to play him at both safety spots. They wanted to play him at nickel cornerback. They apparently played him at two different linebacker spots. Uh, I was talking to Wheels earlier, a star position, which is basically nickel cornerback, kind of like sub linebacker. And then he was playing some will at, at the weak side linebacker. So he just didn't really have a defined role. He played some boundary cornerback at Alabama. I'm not really sure the Steelers would take him to be a boundary corner, but he showed that he was pretty decent in that role at Alabama in limited opportunity. So are the Steelers saying, hey, if we were going to draft you, I guess, a year and a half ago, two drafts ago, would we have preferred you as a boundary cornerback? Maybe, and their cornerbacks are not fantastic. Artie Burns was a terrible pick. These are two teams that have not hit on their first-round picks over the past decade really at all. You look at Jarvis Jones, you look at Artie Burns, you look at, I think, Terrell Edmonds for the Steelers recently. They just have been so, so bad. And they just have been able to compete because they've had Big Ben around forever. But here's the thing with Big Ben is uh, he... (laughs) Excuse me. (laughs) The thing with Big Ben is that uh, he's out for the season. And then so when you look at the Steelers, in my opinion, this is a team that was in the market for a QB. Big Ben is coming up on 40 pretty soon, now has a season-ending injury. Would you not be looking in the 2020 NFL draft in the first round to take a QB? Seems crazy. Maybe they think the future is Mason Rudolph. And in my opinion, this could be a very, very deep quarterback clash. You look at Tua Tungabailoa out of Alabama. You look at Justin Herbert out of Oregon. Jacob Eason out of um, out of Washington, Jake Fromm for, out of uh, Georgia. Of course, Jacob Easton, former Georgia quarterback. You look at potential risers um, like Jordan Love out of Utah State. KJ Costello could be decent if he gets his act together at Stanford. Of course, Joe Burrow, who's a rising star at LSU. And then you have some kind of like wishy-washy players. It seems like they might be more college quarterbacks and college playmakers and NFL QBs like Sam Ellinger at Texas I'm, or Ellinger. I'm a huge Texas fan, but Ellinger, I don't think is a is a typical pro style QB. Same thing with Jalen Hurts, another big 12 QB at Oklahoma. Maybe we'll win the Heisman this year. We have three Oklahoma QBs in a row, all transfers, by the way. We have A&M for Kyler Murray, Texas Tech for Baker. Just kind of just, uh, just weird with that situation. But I think the Steelers would be in the market for a QB. This is a stacked QB class. Maybe they think they can wait on one. That's, you know, that's definitely fine. It just seems weird that they would give away a first-round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick when maybe he is best suited as a nickel cornerback. So I think his best fit is either free safety or maybe they think they have something with him on the boundary. The Dolphins are an absolute uh, shit show. I don't think there's any real, uh, real way around talking about that. You guys know that. I think um, all signs point to the Dolphins winning less than two games this year. I think they're going to compete heavily for 0-16. They have not competed against the Ravens, who were a decent team for sure. They did not compete against the Patriots, who are arguably the best team in the NFL, as they have been year in and year out. The Dolphins are really, really, really bad. This is not a surprise to anyone. I'm not, I'm not telling any tales out of school here by calling the Dolphins terrible, um, but I, I think I have no problem with the Dolphins hitting the reset button now. They have three first-round picks in 2020. They have two first-round picks in 2021. They have both Texans picks in in 2020 and 2021. They have the Steelers pick in 2020. They have their picks in 2020 and 2021. So in the next two drafts, the Steelers, or excuse me, the Dolphins have five first round picks. I think four second round picks. Like they're loaded, at least three second round picks. I think maybe a handful of thirds as well. So the Dolphins have an unbelievable amount of draft capital. If they can hit on even a few of those picks, man, I think this team can definitely uh, turn it around. But right now, they're in a grim situation. Here's the thing, though, is I don't even know that they have to spend a pick on a quarterback. I know that sounds crazy. Don't get me wrong. But Josh Rosen is a first-round caliber player, first-round caliber quarterback for sure. Wasn't given a fair shot in Arizona at all. Had absolutely no offensive line. Was not given a chance. Same thing here with Miami. The Dolphins just have not given him any chance at all. Nothing to build around. But Picture this, right? Three first-round picks this year, two first-round picks next year. Let's say you hit on three of those, and those are at big positions. So maybe it's at, we'll say, left tackle. We'll say um, maybe maybe edge, and we'll go cornerback. 
some something like that like some impactful positions right this is a team that could look to do some damage not immediately obviously but but down the line because you have josh rosen at quarterback let's see he develops into a franchise caliber guy like he has the potential to be whether you hold on to Kenyon drake I'm not really sure, but you have Preston Williams who's shown that he can be a, a really impactful receiver early on. I know he's had a great preseason. We don't really know there. Maybe Devontae Parker gets his act together. Mike Gesicki could be an impactful tight end, second round pick just uh, two drafts ago. And then you look on the defensive side of the ball, like Xavier Howard is a good cornerback, right? Rashad Jones is obviously going to be out the window at that point, but Jerome Baker is a good linebacker. Maybe Christian Wilkins develops into being a really good defensive tackle. They definitely have pieces to build around. They really do. And just add three more impactful players there. And that's only if you hit on, on three of potential five first-round picks, not even factoring in you know their litany of second-round picks and their you know litany of picks in the next two drafts as a whole. So um, honestly, as a Dolphins fan, yeah, this year is going to suck really badly, really badly. Next year, I don't think it's going to be too much better. But hey, in 2021... This could be a team that might compete. Look at the AFC East. Look at the scope of the AFC East. Maybe Josh Allen doesn't work out. Maybe Sam Darnold doesn't work out. The Bills and the Jets would be, you know, essentially in the same spot at that point. Tom Brady is probably going to be gone by then. So you're looking at a, a Tom Brady or a Patriots, Tom Brady list Patriots, excuse me. Who knows if Belichick sticks around after Brady? I don't know, man. Like the Dolphins in three years, who knows? I mean, there are so many question marks, so many different things, but. Um, I honestly don't think the future is looking too grim for the Dolphins with all these picks that they have and all this cap room they're going to have. And I don't think it's too tough to lure free agents down to Miami, Florida, right? But um, I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Obviously, the Dolphins are totally garbage for the foreseeable future, at least the next year or two. Um, And this is a weird move for the Steelers. I think this, in my opinion, like I know they're picking up a good player, but I think this is another move that puts them in kind of a weird limbo situation where... You give up your first round pick, maybe you're uh, you're sacrificing your franchise because with Big Ben probably being gone within the next two years and he's not here this entire season, what is trading a first round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick really offer you? I know that's going to be an unpopular opinion, but that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. That's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.